I'd like to introduce Jeremy Kagan, a professor at, of digital marketing at Columbia Business School and faculty director of several of our executive education programs, including digital marketing strategy, which focuses on engaging customers, strategic planning and return on investment, also known as ROI. This program will take place on our brand new Manhattanville campus in New York City this summer, June 14th through 16th. In Professor Kagan's field, he is a growth and innovation consultant who is an advisor to many corporations, startups, and digital media companies alike. Jeremy is also a former, the former managing director of the Eugene Lang Center for Entrepreneurship and is a mentor in residence at the Columbia Startup Labs. He is an author of several books, including Digital Market Marketing, Strategy and Tactics, and his most recent edition, Designing the Successful Corporate Accelerator, released in 2021. We're excited to have you here with us today. Welcome, Jeremy. Thanks so much. I'm excited to be doing this crash course. And uh, true to its name, it's going to be a fire hose of information in a real short time. So it's a good thing I'm from New York City because I can talk fast. Uh, the two things you'll get are way too much information, but we can't possibly cover everything in the short amount of time we have. And you'll get a lot of tools and hacks and tricks that I've learned in part as part of it being a digital marketer and startup person that'll let you experiment and, um, and mess around with some of these things yourself. So let's get started. Uh, today, we're going to talk about influencer marketing. And what I hope by the end of this, you'll get is a, uh, is a real sense of the kinds of materials we'll cover in our exec ed course so that either you or a colleague you think could benefit from it could join us in June at our brand new campus. So influencer marketing is a pretty broad thing and it's new and emerging and changing all the time. But today we're gonna to talk about a couple of key topics. First, we're gonna talk about just what it is. And there's a few things I'd like to leave with you with in that section. Then we will we'll review the main channels for influencers, places you can find them and places they're gonna do their work for you. Uh, we'll look at a little bit about how to identify and evaluate influencers. And then finally, talk a little bit about the practical tips for managing campaigns and tracking success. Uh, at the end, I'll, you know, again, share some tools with you and take some questions. Uh, so if you have anything that comes up, feel free to put it in there and we'll either jump right into it if it's an appropriate break point or we'll save it to the end and I'll take as much time as we need to make sure we cover everything. So uh, welcome to everyone. I see, wow, Nigeria, Shanghai, all over the place. This is great. Uh, it's nice to see so many people. First of all, influencer marketing is using digital channels to tap into individuals who have the ability to impact and influence our potential customers. It's, it's really using them to, to go and create conversations and interactive back and forth opportunities to reach people who are our potential customers. And so this graphic I thought made a lot of sense. It's really not just about reach and how many people they can reach, but it's their relevance to you as the company or brand, as well as their ability, and this is key, to resonate with the target audience. Because an influencer isn't just like a broadcast channel. And this is a critical point. Traditional marketing is a little different. An influencer can make things happen. That means they're quoted, they're retweeted. They're the kind of person who gets engagement when they post or uh, interact on any social medium. They're connected and not just connected to a lot of people, that's just audience size. They're connected to the types of people who could be your potential customer. Now, another important thing is that they're contactable because if you can't reach them either through a marketplace or through direct contact and, and actually interact with them, it's not gonna be much use to you. But the good news is a lot more tools that can help you get there these days. And finally, they've gotta be respected by your target audience. And it's, that's really uh, critical because the key thing about uh, you know, these kinds of marketing channels is it's not about getting the biggest audience. That's just straight up advertising. If you remember one thing, it's that we have to move from a world of thinking about reach and frequency, you know, the old let's get a huge audience potential customers and beat them over the head with our message as many times as we can. Well, reach and frequency is great for television. It might even be good for traditional advertising. But what we're really looking for in this channel is influence and amplification. Influence based on the ability to actually make someone seeing the message take an action, whether it's click the like button or just pay attention to our marketing message. And amplification 
is the opportunity for them to spread that message further. It's the leverage we get by using influencers and all their social tools to spread the word. So this is critical. We're moving from reach and frequency in the traditional old world to influence and amplification in the new one. Now, it's also important to note, this is based on a really key uh, element of trust. Trust and the ability to engage with one's followers is a critical piece of being an influencer. And we're gonna look at the levels of influence in just a second, but influencer marketing grows because the influencer has established that conversational trust with their following. In some senses, they even think of the, follow, uh, the, the followers, even think of the influencer as almost like their peer or their friend. So trust is a critical element of this. Now you probably are here because you realize this, but influencer marketing is very big and growing very quickly. Depending on how you measure it, it's already in the billions of dollars and growing rapidly. And part of this is because we realize the impact of leveraging that trust on getting our message across in an effective way. We all, it's also true because we're seeing more and more uh, influential and celebrity uh, type figures taking advantage of that following they have and the trust they've built with their fans to leverage and earn a great deal of money. So as influencer marketing grows, we're seeing people like Cristiano Ronaldo, who's one of the biggest soccer players in the world. Um, he's actually the largest earner on Instagram. Now that might not surprise you. After all, he's got 265 million followers. That's a huge audience. But these followers can take action. If he tells them about a brand, they will actually be able to go out and they, they use his trusted recommendation to maybe try or buy that brand. What you may not know is he actually makes more money as an influencer than he does playing his professional sports. Now that's, uh, that's surprising, not just because it's probably the opposite of what you expected, but he's also one of the highest paid figures in soccer. So it's pretty amazing when you think of the, one of the best footballers in the world making more money from his influence over his audience of fans and his army of followers. Um, so this is just a good example of how big and pervasive this has become. Yeah, and as somebody's pointing out, he's grown even from this. So I, I have a, I have to say what one mea culpa, it's hard to keep up even within slides that I was updating as, a, or as much as 10 minutes ago. So bear with me if some of these things from 2021 already seem quaint. Um, we also have to realize though, it's not just about the Cristianos of the world. Micro-influencers um, have actually better engagement rate than superstars. And so what we see with the biggest Kardashian style influencers is even though they have a huge audience and maybe they're out of reach for our brands, these are also people who sort of revert to the mean. They're almost a, a broadcast channel in and of themselves. Whereas micro influencers have much better engagement. Now, what you can see here is a display of a typical set of benchmarks. And what may not be completely clear is that as we go from very small influencers, whatever channel they're on, Instagram, YouTube, or TikTok, we can see much higher engagement with influencers with a relatively small network. As they grow, while this still can be a very useful channel, you see a reversion to the mean as there's a broader following. And this is because we're seeing that level of trust um, erode as they become more of a fan and less of a peer. But the most important takeaway here is it's actually a real opportunity to build up several uh, relationships with several smaller influencers instead of feeling that you have to compete for just the biggest names in the field. And this means, you know, we can actually tap into even smaller influencers that may be just prosumers, people who are fans already of our brand on social media and happen to have a particular big, uh, big following like the, the prototypical mommy blogger or super fan. So we should always realize that so much of this is based on trust and that there's a sweet spot of having a big enough audience and following to reach uh, an, uh, enough potential customers. But paradoxically, a slightly smaller uh, you know, group can actually be much more effective and influential. We're, bank we're banking on the trust that people feel for people in this, uh, in this field to really help them engage and get that action to be taken. So this is really where influence can shine over traditional advertising. Now you may say, well, give me an example. Well, an example is uh, perhaps that will live in infamy is the fire festival. Now, some of you may have seen the, uh, the documentary um, that was made about this. This fire festival was conceived as a very high-end luxury destination music festival, kind of like a Coachella in a tropical paradise. 
And what they did is they had very expensive tickets to what was to be a, a multi-day extravaganza of top artists, gourmet food, and uh, essentially a getaway for the beautiful people. While the, the video will, uh, will not reflect this, this of course ended in total disaster. Operationally, this ended up being almost a humanitarian crisis. The festival never really happened and uh, ultimately left many uh, concert goers stranded and the organizer in jail. But what was amazing about it is the influence marketing channel that they used was uh, incredibly successful. You see a snapshot here of a lot of beautiful folks. These are models, influencers, people with large, large followings. And some of them, like Kylie Jenner, I believe got paid $250,000 for a single post promoting this festival. These tickets were multi-thousand dollar tickets. And often, you know, this was the first time it was ever being thrown. There was no brand to, to tap into. And yet with a few days of posting, in the initial posts sold out 95% of the tickets. So when you look at this, keep in mind that this uh, of course seems like an exciting festival. We won't watch this whole video. Now, I don't want to go too uh, crazy with showing you videos of uh, people swimming in a tropical paradise. Uh, I don't know where you're located, but that's just, uh, that's cruel as we sit at our desks. But I do want to emphasize that despite the disaster the festival was, the influencer marketing channel was an unparalleled success. Millions of impressions to people who trusted and looked up aspirationally to the, uh, the models and influencers that they hired led to a 95% sellout to a previously unknown music festival in just a few days at a price point of several thousand dollars a ticket. So I think that can tell you the power of influence. So the next thing then is where do we go to get this? Well, influencer channels tend to be anything in social media. While it's a form of uh, social marketing, it has a pretty clear preference for Instagram. Instagram, Facebook uh, as, as part of that, uh, and YouTube are very powerful elements. And TikTok would be the sort of you know, rookie of the year in this case. While it's been a big, uh, a big channel for a while, we're seeing more and more power as TikTok influencers uh, become a go-to place for spreading a message. Instagram has a slight preference uh, by for marketers and influencers because many of them are multi-channel, and Instagram presents a more organized marketplace. And I'll explain that in just a second. But you can see here a whole array of different channels, more and more people are adopting a multi-channel approach. Influencers may have a subscriber base on YouTube, a following on Instagram, and a TikTok following to boot. What we're seeing that is mostly uh, the more engaging and multimedia channels that lend themselves to the more persuasive messaging. So video is a strong, uh, you know, is a strong, um, you know, important element of this. Now I do see a bunch of questions. So let me, uh, let me try to uh, you know, take a quick break here and answer uh, some of them. Um, one question is, how do you build real trust with someone you have no personal interaction and relationship with? And there's a twofold answer here. I wanna point out that um, there are marketplaces for this and we'll, we'll you know, speak to some of those possibilities where folks who are influential or creator types are looking for appropriate brands to partner with. But the reality is much of this is gonna depend on your active social strategy and people who are already engaging or interested in your topic area. So I would take both of those approaches as a way to go there. Um, engagement in this context is really multi-pronged as well. Engagement could be as simple as a, you know, click, clicking a like button, uh, and I'll explain why that's important in just a second, uh, all the way up to, you know, what I'm really looking for for amplification is reposting, retweeting, regramming, or sharing in some way through social to amplify and leverage the message that the influencer is putting out there. Um, you know, the engagement rate uh, that someone's mentioning here, uh, and how do we define it, that varies across platforms, but it's generally anything that indicates an interaction with a post. So the bar is low, but the percentage there represents, you know, a combination of everything from sharing the post to commenting on it or simply liking it. So clicking on a heart in that case would have as much chance of be, being considered an engagement as writing a long and detailed comment. Um, I'll go ahead and take that as, uh, you know, the first batch of questions. 
and we'll move on uh, for now. So with these influencer channels then, it's important to start with Instagram. Instagram, of course, is one of the biggest social media platforms on the planet, over a billion monthly users. They made two billion alone in this, uh, in this area, um, you know, in just 2019 before the pandemic. And, you know, our, our uh, usage of influencer marketing has only grown. One of the major innovations that they put together then was testing and now deploying a new format around a marketplace for creators. This means that you can formally go into Instagram and connect with influencers through the platform. Now, previous to this, when we, when we interacted with influencers, it involved sending an email, maybe sharing a contract, but ultimately an off-platform interaction. The influencer would give us statistics and information on their following. We would commit to saying, you're gonna post X amount of times and get a certain amount of reach and everything would be great. Now, the, the challenge here was that we had no way to go past that. We had no independent reporting. By creating a platform, Instagram has created a way for us to engage directly. This means we can see the statistics through a trusted third party, make sure that we're meeting our obligations mutually. The transaction can be taken in place there as well. And there's an important and key difference. For those familiar with social media advertising, one of the most amazing things we can do in social platforms is custom audiences. This is when we upload known people or we build an audience around an interaction with something we've posted. Now, when the post that we've paid for for an influencer previously went through that influencer's account exclusively, we had no way of building a custom audience around those who liked the post. The Instagram marketplace has changed that. This means if I pay an influencer to post something for me and 100,000 people heart the, the post, click a like button, make a comment or some other engagement, those people can now be placed into a custom audience that can be used for further communication. In other words, I can target them for, for follow on messaging. This also allows the exciting potential of a lookalike audience built on that. Now we're getting in a little bit into the weeds here, but this is a key point. And if you, if you have this outsourced to a team member or an agency, what you wanna do here is use that influencer to get that initial excitement and engagement around the paid interaction and then use the audience defined by that interaction for follow on reach with what is now a very targeted audience. Everyone clear on that? We can deal with that in the Q&A section if anyone has questions. So this is an incredibly powerful platform. Another one of course is YouTube. Uh, I do like to say seeing is believing. This is a place where we see the proverbial unboxing videos and celebrities doing everything from cooking to putting on makeup where there's a very viable place to insert the appropriate brand. Now, this is a, a very well understood medium. There's advertising in place to reach people in that way. But think of this as product placement. It's visual. It feels much more like traditional advertising, but the channels have truly huge reach and frequency and influencers are making hundreds of millions of dollars. Those of you with kids will recognize this little guy, Ryan, who's a little older now, but pulled in $22 million in the year I tracked it with a little help from mom and dad and some of his siblings. Ryan basically created a YouTube channel where he played with toys and talked about them. This was so incredibly successful that in addition to the tens and millions of dollars he makes, he's now got a TV show on Nickelodeon. So some of these celebrities are now, our, our former influencers are now celebrities in their own right. It wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be uh, fair not to mention some of the channels that are maybe less obvious. Twitter is an incredible place for uh, building real-time audiences as well, and a way to leverage the links and um, content that we're creating that we want the influencers to share and post. It also allows us to identify people by the kinds of stuff they're posting in real time, and I'll share a tool that allow you to do just that. Um, one of the great things about Twitter is it's real time, so you can get some quick um, promotion and understanding of content that's important to you, particularly for live events and things like that. Now, a blind spot of many people who are, uh, shall we say, grown-ups, um, is that Amazon and Twitch are great channels for reaching uh, younger generations, especially, uh, but a virtual cross-section of the world that are into the gaming world. Amazon has two relevant programs for influencers here. Uh, Amazon has an influencer affiliate program. So if your product or service is already sold through the Amazon platform, it's very easy to have a performance-based uh, way to compensate an influencer. They can simply take a, a link from the Amazon platform, 
promote it on their various social media and get a commission. So that's important to know about for uh, being able to leverage that relationship and keep your initial outlay with a potential new influencer that you're building a relationship with relatively low. When they say, hey, buy this product, provide that promotional link, it's easy to track. Twitch is something that is a whole different animal. Twitch is a streaming platform for gamers. Many gaming personalities and, and many others as well use Twitch to have a live streaming way to reach and interact with their fans. And this can be in the multiple millions of followers. You can see there Ninja, who's one of the biggest esports athletes of all time. And yes, that's a thing. There's even college scholarships. Ninja spends about eight hours a day to even more playing video games and, uh, and talking trash in some cases on his live streaming channel. He has tens of millions of followers and makes about a half million dollars a month just from his subscribers and various pro um, prosperous influencer relationships he makes. He was paid a million dollars to play a new video game and help launch it into the top 10 in 24 hours. There are a lot of very influential folks here and you don't have to be in the gaming market to tap into their very large audience of avid gamers and fans. So keep that in mind when thinking about reaching a youthful audience Twitch and other streaming platforms in the gaming world are critical, critical for, uh, for brands in this space. Let me take another moment to see if there's any burning questions here um, that I can take care of. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm, I see some questions about social uh, and, uh, and influence marketing more general. Um, they're just too, too general to answer specifically, so I'll take, we'll tackle those at the end. Um, I would say uh, if my answer wasn't clear from my previous thing, I'll, and I'll work with you on this again, the spectrum of influence suggests that in a perfect world, building up a portfolio of micro influencers is going to be your best way to actually uh, engage with this channel. Um, the, uh, the reasoning on TikTok, we'll talk a little more about TikTok, is just that it's new and more difficult to take advantage of it. Uh, but I think we're seeing more and more utilization there. It's also that the audience is a little uh, less receptive to marketing messages at this point. So uh, the question was about why TikTok is not utilized more in this space. Uh, Instagram is a much more acceptable channel right now for marketing messaging. Uh, that's my opinion, although I think it would hold true. Um, now for uh, political messages, this is a tough one. I would suggest that uh, we, we punt on this one and talk more about controversial and uh, regulatory messaging towards the end. Um, We'll also have an example from the world of, uh, you know, the world of uh, finance as well. So I'll just say uh, for the person who asked about Amazon influencers, uh, they do have uh, conversion links that are tracked by influencer. And so it is possible with a few, you know, typical direct marketing tricks that anyone who's used affiliate programs have used to be able to track this and track conversion rates independently, whether it's using separate landing pages or separate tracking codes. So I've, in, uh, I've answered a few of these just to keep the, the flow going. Um, and yes, somebody did note that TikTok is great for booksellers. If you haven't examined the hashtag book talk, it's actually been considered to revive many books and even influence retail purchases for bookstores. So this isn't a small thing. It can even make the cash register ring and the door swing in retail locations. So uh, moving on, uh, and I'm just moving this quickly so that we can make it through. Um, I wanted to mention um, that uh, TikTok, of course, is becoming bigger and bigger. We're actually seeing a lot of TikTok stars in, in a phenomenon called hype houses, where several uh, influencers on TikTok and other platforms get together and they engage and interact and feed off of each other's influence and followings. And so this is a very common thing we're seeing. Uh, so when, uh, when in identifying larger influencers, up and coming influencers, particularly aiming at a youth audience, this can be an extra bit of leverage if they participate in one of these groups. It's worth keeping an eye on. Now to identify influencers is obviously the next big step. When we're looking for these folks, we have to do two things. We wanna identify people who are reachable and have the potential influence over our target audience and people who have the authenticity to get that engagement. And the challenge is it's tough to scale. Celebrities tend to have a very large reach, but they're more like broadcasts that they have low engagement. And this is because when you have millions and millions of followers, it doesn't feel like that personal interaction that it might feel like with a more micro influencer. So this is another example of some uh, you know, levels here. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of reference points for the types of breakpoints 
on what makes a micro influencer. But remember, this is a spectrum. This is just a guideline. Don't take any of these too seriously. So generally, though, we're starting at the most, um, you know, the most nano level at some, you know, micro influencers who might be better called brand advocates. These are people you might identify from your own following who already love or engage with your brand and have a larger than average set of followers, maybe five or a th 500 or a thousand followers. As we get up to micro influencers, we're starting to see people who've essentially gone beyond friends and family to start to have an impact on their area of interest or industry. And that's really what we're trying to do. Build up a, a basically a portfolio of people who maintain that high engagement middle with a large reach. Now we're looking at averages here. And so when you think about this, if you're gonna target someone in the mid tier, it's gonna be both more affordable because there'll be less competition and a smaller audience. But if we can find someone with engagement in our area, that can let us punch above our weight. So we're looking for someone, not just with a big following, but think about the engaged following. If they engage, for example, if it's a fashion uh, you know, influencer who gets a ton of engagement on posts about makeup or accessories, and that's our brand, this may be a way to get extra leverage out of our influencer marketing dollar. And so I would point out, for example, in, you know, in Instagram, the engagement can go south pretty quickly. So for a small engage, you know, Instagram fo following, like one that you or I might have, it's easy to get a 10% engagement rate. After all, some of our friends are liking all our posts. That goes quickly to about half that level when we have a larger following. And this is when we start getting beyond our friends. Maybe we're we're very popular and we have acquaintances at this level, but it's really when you start to see four to 100,000 followers that the engagement rate is still much stronger than larger accounts, but it is not at that level of 10% or even 20% we might see on a particularly engaged and small account. This is why when evaluating influencers, we don't just look at their follower account. We look at their benchmarks of engagement. We want to see how they compare to other potential channel uh, partners that we might have. And this is an important point. Now, um, another way to look at this, this chart is kind of a good benchmark. This will give you a sense of the kinds of engagement rates that we're seeing on uh, influencer averages. And so when you're evaluating people, you can compare it to something like this. This particular chart comes from a company called Creator IQ. Uh, I'm not saying that it's the best data ever, but it's, it is nice that they've shared. And so this is something you can use to evaluate. It shows you clearly the trend that Smaller, uh, smaller influencers have higher engagement. So, so all things being equal, someone with half the audience, but twice the engagement will probably be a better choice for your influencer marketing experiment. Now here, I'm gonna ask you to be a little interactive with me. I've got a tool for you. You can use this trick. It's an advanced search trick to find a way to um, identify some influencers for Instagram. What I'd like you to do right now is take a look at the chat window. What I've just put in there is something you can put into your Google search window right now. Let me explain what you're looking at. This is advanced search lingo for doing a little hack we call finding influencers to explore further. You'll see it says site colon Instagram. That tells Google search only the public Instagram site. Now this doesn't include every person who's on Instagram because social media is private for most of us, but influencers of course have public profiles. The next thing you'll see, it says keyword advertising. Replace keyword advertising with whatever, um, oops, sorry, that looks like I posted that just to the hosts and panelists. Let me repost that to everybody. Um, so everyone can see this, there we go. So where you see um, site Instagram, it says search just Instagram. Keyword advertising is where you should replace it with whatever you're interested in. For example, someone asked about healthcare, someone asked about financial investing, put in as specifically as you're comfortable with the keyword or key phrase that's relevant to you. This is going to explore Instagram profiles for that particular phrase. So for example, sometimes I use uh, CBD as an example of the emerging cannabis industry, and you could find people who mention CBD in their profile page. Now you'll notice it says, quote, Instagram photos and videos, close quote, and then a negative sign with the word explore. There are two pages that turn up when you do this. We want to get rid of the one that is a general explore page. And so that's exactly what we do. This makes sure that we're only searching the Instagram site for profile pages. And when you hit return, you'll get something that looks like the thing on the right here. 
a list of Instagram profiles that mention the thing you did the search on. In that case, it was parenting and advertising, but it could be anything you want. What this allows you to do is then begin to browse and see who's got a lot of followers. So you can see here, this person has 139 followers. Probably not a great influencer for us if we're trying to market to a large following. Down here, now we're talking 997 followers. You know, in essence, this gives you a short list of people to start reaching out to or checking to see if they might be someone you can engage with. Just a little trick. I did promise some hacks that were low and no dollar. And so there you go. Another useful tool is to check some YouTube charts to see who's trending, who might be uh, you know, able to uh, present your message better. Tubular Labs has a good set. You search basically what's trending in your topics of choice. This is more creator driven. So you're looking for people um, you know, that can actually do a good, uh, you know, good job of making the video as well. Uh, but again, it's more like advertising. If you're looking for followers on Twitter, tool I would recommend is called Follower Walk. It's a freemium model, so you can check this tool out with, um, without uh, too much trouble. Tubular Labs is YouTube charts. Follower Wonk for Twitter. And this will give you the ability to do some research on potential Twitter bio influencers. I think this is a useful tool as well. And then I also want to point out Spark Toro as a tool to compare potential influencers, find out sites that your audience might go who engage with them, and even identify fake followers. There's a certain amount of fake followers no matter what you do. So that's uh, Spark Toro. And again, I'll, I'll re you know, repeat this list at the end um, so that you can see it. Now, one, uh, one simple way to find influencers is to go to marketplaces. And there are several uh, and many more growing that are now, are now out there to allow you to connect with influencers. Instagram, for example, has that marketplace we mentioned. You may want to take a look at places like Tracker or Grin.co. Um, there's a great one called Hashtag Paid for creator-driven folks. This is a place to start for discovering influencers. Uh, it also provides, in many cases, a tool to manage campaigns, track performance, and do contracting and payment. You're going to want to look for uh, all those elements if you're evaluating a platform. And one of the things to watch out for is many times the, uh, the platform will recommend the influencers on the platform, not necessarily the influencers that are best for you. After all, they can only recommend the people they have contracted to do business with. This means that some of these can be perceived as a selection problem. So the people who sign up here are people who want to make money using their followings, not necessarily the perfect influencer for you. But with those caveats in mind, remember the key question here is can you maintain and build this relationship for the long term, track it effectively, and know that you're making money. So the last thing I want to talk about real quickly is just go over some of the key challenges here. Um, and I will deal with some of the questions I see popping up in just a moment. But I want to make sure those of you on a tight time schedule can jump off knowing you've seen it all. So when we're talking about managing campaigns, there's a lot of practical things you need to consider. In addition to just finding the right, uh, you know, the right influencers, making sure you're doing the basics of the, you know, the contracting, you got to watch out from everything from inflated follower counts to uh, inauthentic and, and flat out blatant pro product promotion that doesn't help you with impacting uh, and moving the needle on people trying your product. Um, if the influencer doesn't have a lot of trust or engagement from their following, it's just a broadcast channel. And if they're doing too many promotions, you might find that their followers just have a fatigue and just ignore all the paid stuff. So this is a problem. And then finally, make sure you're working with people who take this professional relationship seriously. Um, there's a legal risk. And if it's, an, if it's an ad and it's not identified properly, the FTC and other uh, authorities may go after you and your brand as uh, the person who should know better with fines or even worse. What I would mention though is of all the things we do is we test a lot of new channels. One of the things we try to do is make sure that we're taking the steps to track impact. That means start with understanding why you're doing this. If it's to learn, that's fine. But are you trying to drive sales, brand awareness, or uh, affinity? Make, a, you know, make a, you know, someone who's a sort of fair weather customer into a long-term and more committed customer. All of these are legitimate. But what you want to do is really make sure that you are effective in defining your goals. If you don't start keeping score in the beginning while you're testing, you'll never know whether you're improving. So I do encourage people to start with that. 
It's also important that you know you make sure the platform where you're, you're using either does this automatically, and Instagram has this built in, or you make the effort to be compliant. Put it in your contract. Make sure that when you have a post, like you can see here, it's clear that this is a paid partnership. The last thing you want to do is uh, is lose all the benefits by running afoul of the, uh, the the gray areas here. A couple of additional tools you might have here: a company called Hootsuite that does a great job of social media tools provides a little bit of a guide on how to work with influencers through social media and you know, under, uh, identify potential conversation clusters that will get you to engage. And they even have a simple ROI calculator that can get you started in thinking about how your investment will result in yield. Now, I do have a, a list of tools here that I'll leave up while we answer the rest of the questions. But before we do, I wanted to point out something coming down the road. This is a virtual influencer. Her name is Iron Mouse. This is an influencer who is an anime avatar and in a single uh, you know, marathon session called the, the Subathon actually went over a million subscribers and followers on Twitch. This is a, a really bright new area we're seeing where virtual influencers, or as they're calling them here, VTubers, can be just as powerful as real people. So this is a little bit you know, cutting edge, a little scary, but now you know to keep an eye on it. Um, so today, we did in our crash course cover why influencer marketing is a big business. It's about trust and authenticity and the ability to both get both influence and amplification. The critical necessity of finding influencers that work with your audience that are engaged. Um, my suggestions on using a contract and that may mean a marketplace to track and professionalize your deal and ultimately make sure you set your goals and metrics early to track your success and start building a long-term strategic program. Um, with that, let's go back here and I will start taking some questions. And I should point out, we'll be back in June with a full spectrum of digital marketing. This is just a small part of what we'll be talking about. So I encourage you to sign up or at least take a look and recommend any friends who could use that crash course there as well. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, I realize that we're over time, but I, I do want to ask one last question uh, that came in uh, through the Q&A. Uh, as, as Stefani asks, uh, how can you win over influencers, you know, having a limited budget? Well, uh, this is where, uh, and I see all the thanks. Thank you so much. I totally understand if you have to jump, so don't be shy. You will not hurt my feelings, but if you can stick around for just a few minutes longer, I'll try to answer some of these terrific questions. So um, that question is really about your brand and its, uh, its messaging. And in some cases, if, for example, if your brand is very aggressively uh, trying to be carbon neutral, you're going to find influencers for, who, for whom that is the passion. Remember, the influencers don't necessarily need to be paid influencers. It's possible to engage on things that they care about and get that relationship built on the basis of that shared passion. This is great for brands that are supporting causes of passion like the environment, or anything else that might get people excited and passionate on their own. So if it's a vegan uh, chef who loves new recipes that can, uh, that can be performed without meat and that fits your brand mission, engage on the level that they care about, not about promoting your brand. Think of it as the long game. It doesn't always have to be about sell, sell, sell. It's about building a relationship with somebody from that position of mutual respect and authenticity is critical to that engagement and amplification we're looking for. Definitely, definitely. Thank you uh, for providing that insight. Curious um, if, if, and I know we're, we're over time, but just want to address one more question um, that came in from Cynthia on uh, how do you think that the, influ the influencer profile has changed, you know, pre-pandemic to now uh, as we're moving out of the pandemic? Um, I don't think it's changed uh, as much. I think people are more comfortable now during the pandemic, there was a surge in you know, people using social media because they lacked other ways of interacting. And now we're going to definitely see, as people go back to whatever the new normal is, a lot more engagement in real life. But what, that, what we're seeing is that people are now much more comfortable consuming social media. And we've seen the tools advance to this point where we're now able to buy and interact directly from the channels, where before we might have had to do some hacks and duct tape it together. So influencer marketing the infrastructure is much more professionalized and the consumer is much more comfortable. Definitely, definitely. And I think, you know, given the, the amount of activity that we've had here in the chat and engagement that we've had from participants, I think 
you know, it's it's just continuing to get more, um, more and more popular, right? So I just want to thank you for your presentation today, Jeremy. Um, you know, as we look forward to your upcoming program on digital marketing strategy, um, <clears throat> again, everyone look out for more information about this program via email. On the behalf of Columbia Business School Executive Education, we'd like to thank you all for joining us and wish that you all have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. I'm sorry if there's uh, questions I couldn't get to, but I do look forward to seeing some of you or all of you in a uh, in a real live session in Manhattanville. And thanks for listening.